Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Christian Minute Podcast. My name is Anne Markey and I'm your host. If you're hearing sounds around me, it's because they're digging up my back alley. And so there's construction going on today, but I wanted to show up live to just share with you some resources that you can use as a family. Now for the podcast for the past couple of weeks, I've been interviewing different guests and I really enjoyed those because I don't know how many of you watched or listened, but I know that I was blessed by them and encouraged and learned a lot because I was able to ask questions. Um, but I'm doing just a small shift for the next couple of weeks doing solo episodes talking about having a life that's centered around Christ. So thank you for joining me. This is the first episode in that series. There'll be a bunch. And the reason why I started with this topic about resources to help you is because there are almost too many resources out there. Um, And I wanted to kind of get you thinking about different things that you can use to really help you bring Christ into different areas of your life. So if you don't know this about me, I live in Edmonton, Canada, and it's a pretty big city. Well, not big necessarily U.S. um, size, but for Canada anyways, there's a million people. And when I go grocery shopping, I go to a large retail store. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I also have American family. And so I visit the States on a semi-regular basis. And I remember one time going to the grocery store, I believe it was Walmart, I could be wrong, and going down the aisle and the amount of cake mixes in that aisle was overwhelming. It it felt like an entire row of just all the different types of boxed cake mixes you can buy. And there were so many choices that I couldn't even pick one. Now, comparatively, the store that I usually shop at, again, it's a big retail store in a large city. So this is not like a small country back town grocery store. This is a large grocery store. We probably have 10 different choices. Now, you may be wondering why I'm sharing this story, and it's because it's hard sometimes picking one resource when you have a lot of choice. It's a little bit easier to make a choice when you only have a few options. And I find that when it comes to Christian resources out there, it's like the American cake mix aisle. Don't even get me started about how many different Oreo varieties you have. Here, there's only maybe like four. And I know that in the States, there are much, many more, but when there's so much to choose from, it's hard to pick just one. And so what I wanted to do was just to start right off and say, hey, I know that there are tons of resources out there that you could access to help you bring Christ into your home, that can help you bring Christ into every area of your life. But there's so many choices and so many different opinions that sometimes it's hard to pick. So what I'm going to do today is share with you five different resources that you can use for you and your family to help you grow in your faith and bring Christ into every aspect of your home. And then as a bonus at the end, I'll tell you about another amazing free resource that you can use. Now, when I say five resources, I actually mean five groups. There are many different areas that you can find amazing resources, but today I'm just going to cover five. So I'll share you what that kind of category is, and then I'll give you one suggestion of a product that you can try out for yourself, look into. And then I'll also tell you a little bit about how my family uses that resource And maybe that can give you some sort of idea as to where to start. So if you're ready, I'm just going to go straight into the first family resource to help you grow. Okay, so the first resource that you can use are family devotional books. So these are books that have a multitude of 
devotions that you can open up. Sometimes they're dated, sometimes they're just numbered. And the idea is that you open it every day, at some point in your day, you read the scripture, you read the little blurb, and maybe you pray. Now, these types of resources are amazing because if you're like me, you might be thinking, okay, I want to read scripture with my children on a regular basis, but I don't know where to start. Or my dear husband, he knows the Bible and he can understand it, but he has a really hard time dumbing down the language. And I'm not trying to say that my children are dumb, they're just young. And so he, in his mind, he, in his adult brain, that's what he's trying to explain to our kids. And so they'll just look at him like, mm, didn't get it. And he sometimes gets frustrated because I can take an idea and simplify it in a way that our children understand. So if you're like my husband and you know the Bible and you understand it, but you're not sure how to kind of bring that language down to the level of where your kid's at and what they understand, then a family devotional book is great because usually um, you can either do this by age or age group, like preschoolers, teenagers, elementary kids, there are d devotional books for every level. And there's also then specific just family ones that are good for a multitude of age groups and even for adults. And so this can be really helpful because I find most devotional books do a really good job of clarifying and simplifying verses and concepts that maybe as adults we're not sure how to simplify. And so that's one of the reasons why I encourage families to start exploring these types of resources because one, it gives you a plan. You don't need to think about what verse you're going to read next. Two, it gives you kind of like a story to connect to. So as we know, sharing stories is one of the best ways we can teach something to somebody because you might be able to relate to a story more than you can relate to some of the specific verses. So when we connect God's word to personal stories or we read somebody else's story, it helps connect those ideas in our brains because that's one of the ways we learn is through stories. And so most of these devotional books will have some sort of story or blurb that can really help give a concept to some of these verses. Because sometimes, again, if you're like me, you can read a verse and be like, okay, I'm not sure how that applies to me right now. And so I find that most authors in their devotional books can really give you a clear idea of how that thought or concept can be related today in this time. So I highly encourage you to think about these types of resources. If you've been in my Facebook group, I have a post in there that shares some suggestions for you to look at. And also in the comments, people have added their favorite resource. I also have a blog post sharing 12 different family resources for Christians to use. This is the, the information that I'm using to share with you five different sections or categories, but I do have a blog post giving you 12 different categories. So if after this podcast episode, you're still wondering like, oh, I actually, there's other things I wanna access, then I'll leave the blog post in the comments. You can go in there, check in it. I have the area in which the resource is, like family devotions, explain to you a little bit as to what they are, how they help you. And then I give you three examples for each. So again, I'm not giving you a thousand different things to go look at, just a few resources for each category to really just help you start thinking about what's out there and what you want to use for yourself and your family. So in our family, what we do is we have a devotional book and usually we open it once we're done our dinner. We'll go through the devotions and then we'll pray together and that's it. It doesn't have to be this complicated orchestration. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes long, just a short time together in God's word and prayer 
will really take things really far. One of the things that we do actually is, so not only are they learning scripture, they're relating it to their lives usually because you're using stories. But three, one of the things we do is we say, hey, today's Bible verse is from John. Where in the Bible is John found? New Testament or Old Testament? And so this is a really fun way of helping your kids understand where different books of the Bible are in comparison to Old Testament and New Testament. And in a couple weeks, one of my podcast episodes will be about how to bring in scripture naturally and easy without it being complicated. And so I've already given you a sneak peek as to some of my suggestions. So that's just one, you know, as you're at the end of dinner, just do some family devotions. And I have many other tips in a future episode. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to watch out for that one and to listen to the tips. Okay. So in the blog post, one of the suggestions that I gave is a family devotional book called Jesus Calling, which is um, a really great resource. We first discovered this author for the younger children. So she is an author who started writing for kids and they were like, I want to say preschool, elementary age family, like devotions. And now she's brought those into a family devotional time. And I, and so that's, reasons why we picked it because we had read the kids devotional ones we knew we enjoyed it that same style and so i like going with similar authors that we know you get to know somebody's theology and the things that they think through and how they present information and we already knew all that from doing a previous devotion so it was an easy shift to try out the family devotion so again if you want those links or the name again, um, all of that is going to be in my blog post and you can find the link in the comments. The second category of resources that Christian families can use is Christian parenting books. Now, when I first became a mom, I was really overwhelmed with all the different things that I had to learn and all the different books and honestly, It could be exhausting because everywhere you turn, everybody has a different opinion. Um, And so I really was mindful that even though secular Christian books have a lot of great direction and wisdom, I wanted to bring Christ into my parenting philosophies. And so there were a few books that I read that really made a world of difference and help me become the parent that I am. And so the reason why I suggest this is because, you know, chances are your children aren't perfect (laughs) and you want some wisdom, but you want that wisdom to come from a godly source. And so that's the number one reason why my first go-to is to some Christian family parenting books versus secular. So I'm not saying you can't read those non-Christian family books because Like I said, they have a lot of wisdom that can help, but I also like to take the perspective of the Christian parenting book so that I have that Christian perspective in it. And again, this is another category that has a bazillion different books that you can read, but I find the number one book that helped me the most was five love languages for your children. And not only was this good for my children, but for my marriage, because it really helps you understand that everybody receives and shows love in a different way. And when you discover those ways, it helps you relate to them more. And so, It was a complete game changer. I actually read Five Love Languages, just the book, um, within the first few months of our marriage. And it was really powerful. And I think it's one of the reasons why our marriage is so strong because we started right at the beginning of our time together trying to express and accept love in the way that we speak it. 
And so if you haven't read the book, you know, there's one for love languages, for just the regular love languages one. There's one for children. There's one, I think, for singles, maybe women. I don't know. There's a bunch of different ones. Um, but I'm going to tell you a tip. The love languages are all the same, but the examples change. So for example, love languages for kids will give you examples of ways you can express love to your children versus the other ones that would be like maybe for your spouse or for the people that you work with and stuff like that. So really, you only need to read one of them and just use those perspectives and that idea to relate to any of your other relationships. Now, the reason why I love this is because my husband accepts loves with words of affirmation. And I am not a words of affirmation type of person. It's not that I didn't know what they were. I just didn't know how to include that in my conversations and in my relationship with him because it was just, it's not my love language. It's not how I speak it. It's not how I receive it. It was completely foreign to me. And what I loved was that this love language book gives you detailed examples of ways you can express those things to either your spouse or your children. So if you're in a relationship, whether you're married or with your kids or whatever your scenario is, if you're having a hard time relate to that person, chances are reading this book can help you because it'll give you insight as to like part of the way that they function. And then it'll give you really concrete ideas as to how you can start building that relationship with by loving in the love language. So I hope some of that makes sense. If it doesn't, I highly recommend this book. It's probably like it's my number one pick for a marriage resource and for kids resource. So if you haven't read it, I very much encourage you to get a copy and to just really look at the examples and try loving the people in your life through that lens and it'll be a game changer. Okay, now we're on our third set of Christian family resources that we can use. And this is music. So one of the things that my family and I love is music. And one of the ways that you can easily bring Christ into your home is to listen to Christian music. This can be worship music, this can be kids music, this can be whatever type of Christian music you enjoy. But one of the ways I find it most helpful with my children is finding Christian music that helps my kids learn God's word. My kids are not great at memorizing scripture and maybe you aren't either. But time and time again, we see that if you put scripture to song, you can learn that song and then you're singing God's word. So this helps you learn God's word, but then also meditate it because my brain is an all day musical. There are always songs coming in and out of my brain that, throughout my day. And so it's really nice to sometimes I'll sing those songs and it helps me meditate on God's word throughout the day because I know it and I'm singing it in my brain and it's just part of my soundtrack. But for my kids, you know, I want them to learn God's word, but I don't want it to become this negative thing that they hate, that I'm giving them prizes or whatever. So finding songs that teach my kids scripture has made a huge difference because you know, they've been able to learn the books of the Bible in order through songs. They've been able to learn different verses that are key to their faith through music. And so it's incredible how much they will remember in a song variety versus just a text. So if you enjoy music and if you want to bring it into your home, 
I highly recommend it. And there are a few kids Christian music that I know for sure help you memorize scripture. And my number one Christian music CD that I recommend is called Slugs and Bugs. They have a lot, I think they have like two or three CDs, maybe more at this point. I know that we have one or two. And their songs are really fun. They're easy to learn. And every single one of them is a verse. Or like, I, th I think a few of them are the books of the Bible. So you learn those as well. So those are a great way to just have playing in the car or in your home or wherever. You can infuse that into your home, learn God's scripture throughout your day, meditate on it, and have fun at the same time. So this is an amazing way just to simply bring Christ in the different areas of your life because you can listen to this music in the car, at work, at home, wherever you are, and it's going to be a blessing. So I encourage you to add some sort of Christian music to your day. It'll make a big difference. Okay. Now, the next family resource that I want to share with you is a family prayer guide. Now, if you're like me, you want to pray more for different things, but you have a hard time knowing exactly what to pray and different things you can pray for. So prayer guides are really good with this because usually they either give you a prompt like pray for the sick pray for your neighbor, pray for this and that. Um, but I've actually created a resource that I have linked in the blog post that is a 30-day prayer guide that's free for you to get. Um, and not only does it give you a prompt of who to pray for, but then it gives you a verse that's related to that prompt. Because sometimes I want to pray for the sick person, but I don't just want my prayer to be like, hey God, please heal this person. And I'm not saying that that's a bad prayer. I think God hears it. And if we're truly wanting this person to be healed, then that's enough. But I want to deepen my language in prayer and one of the ways to do that is by praying scripture. So in this free prayer guide, I give you the person or group of things to pray for and then give you a prayer that you can, like give you a verse that you can kind of pray through for that particular group. I hope that makes sense to you. If not, you can check it out. Just go into the blog post. It's under family prayer guides, which is number six in my blog post because it's 12 resources and this is number six that I'm sharing. And then I give you some other suggestions of some prayer guides. And the reason why I've added this is because prayer is a wonderful tool that we have. It, it's the door that gives us entry into the presence of God. And I forget sometimes that when I'm praying, it's like I'm in his throne room and I'm standing before the king of the universe asking him for something. And so a prayer guide helps me be more focused. It gives me context and really helps push me to pray for things that maybe I would normally forget. So. I believe it's been a while since I went through the prayer guide, um, but I believe one of the areas is praying for martyrs. And martyrs are people around the world who have been basically hurt and jailed and sometimes killed for their faith. And it's not necessarily something that I think about. And so to really push myself to pray for new things, I added it to the prayer guide because it was something that I wanted to pray for, but I had a hard time implementing it until then I use a prayer guide. And then, you know, once you use that guide on a regular basis, you don't necessarily need it forever because you're building that pattern of praying for different people throughout the week. And so it's a really good way of just expanding 
the circle of the things that you pray for. Because prayer is the most powerful thing that we have. Sometimes we think, well, I can't do anything. All I can do is pray. And I think all that you can do, that's the best thing you can do is praying for things. And I have a few prayer warriors in my life that pray for me daily. And that is a blessing that I'm not sure I'll fully see the power of that until I'm in eternity. And it's something that I want to do for my children that I'm trying to get into the practice of because unfortunately, you know, one of those prayer warriors was my grandmother and she passed away a month ago. And it's this idea of like, well, who is now going to pick up the torch and pray for the next generation? And as a woman who comes from an amazing legacy of faith, I feel like it's my responsibility to pick up that torch and pray for my siblings, pray for their children, pray for my children, pray for my family. And I sometimes have a hard time with that because I have total ADHD and the things I want to do, I don't do. And so just having a prayer guide reminds me, hey, Anne, remember how you wanted to pray for your, your kids every day? Or remember how you actually wanted to specifically pray for martyrs or missionaries or whatever, like leaders? Um, and so creating this guide and then using it has been amazing. And so if that's something you want to grow in, then I highly encourage you to check it out. But also then it helps you start praying with your children. And kids learn by watching what you do. And so if you tell them to pray, but you never pray with them, they don't quite learn. And so then just learning how to pray yourself and then naturally bringing that into your relationships with your kids and then both growing in it and it's amazing. The fourth family Christian resource I want to share with you is Christian apps. Now, I think it's hilarious that growing up, like we didn't have smartphones, we didn't have apps. It was your standard Bible. And I actually remember the first time I was in church and looking over and one of the elders had an iPad with him. And I remember like, he's bringing a screen to church. Like, how dare he? <laughs> And now, you know, like people hardly ever bring their physical Bibles to church. And I'm sure there's opinions on pros and cons to either of those things. But one of the things that's come from this is having access to Christian resources on our phones. And I'm not always the biggest fan of technology because it can be the gateway into a bunch of sin. But it's also the gateway to a lot of amazing Christian resources that you can access to on your phone. And if you're like most of the people I know, you have your phone with you on a regular basis. And if you want to spend more time with God, if you want to spend more time in his word, then it's good to add a Christian app on your phone because then it's like, hey, I have five minutes right now. I'm waiting for the bus. I can choose to read my Bible in that time and you have it on your phone. So again, there's a bunch of different apps um, and I'm not going to go through them all today because there's just too many, but I'm going to share with you the number one app that I use every single day. And this is the version Bible app. So I think this is probably like one of the biggest apps out there. So you've probably heard of it. You might even have it on your phone, but I really love this app because it has a bunch of things to help you. So one, it has devotional plans. So if you don't want to go the actual physical book, like physical book route, you can just go into the Uversion app, go into the Bible plans, and if there's a particular area or topic that you want to grow in, you just put that in the search bar and then they'll give you a bunch of choices as to which one, like which plan you want to follow. And then you can share that with a friend to have accountability if you want to do that. 
So that's the first thing. The second thing that they have there is a daily verse. So again, if you just have three minutes and you want to read a verse a day, it's right there on the home screen. You don't have to go find it. You can just read it there. Um, but then when you go into the Bible portion, okay, you can then so like read a verse and I do this regularly. I'll read a verse sometimes and I read the New King James and the verse doesn't quite make sense. Like I, I'm having a hard time understanding it. And so then I underline it and then I press the button compare and then you can read like 10 of other versions of the Bible of that same verse. And I find that this is super helpful because if I don't understand it in the New King James, I'll read it in the NIV, in the NIRV, in the Passion Translation, even sometimes the Message Translation. I have, I think, the NASB and a few other versions, and I'll read them all together. And usually when I do that, I see a pattern. I see like, okay, if every single one of those versions are using similar language to describe something. Sometimes the words are just in a different order or they just use some other words that mean the same thing. Then I understand the scripture better and I don't have to have 20 different Bible versions on my shelf. It's just at a press of a button and I probably use that function once a week because I love seeing, okay, like, what does this really mean? And then when I read the different versions, I'm like, I get a fuller picture of what it means. And then once I understand what it means, I can then apply it to the things I know about God or the things that God wants me to do. Now, the reason why I say that this is a great family resource is because my kids don't understand New King James Version. And sometimes, even though I usually can simplify a verse and its concept to my kids, that's not necessarily always true. And so I love having the NIRV, which is kind of like an easier version of the NIV that my kids use as their Bibles because they each have a Bible and we get them this version because it's really good for kids. And so then I don't have to have my own NIRV version. I can just read that version on my app and I can help it then explain some of the con like context and meaning to my kids using that version because they can already understand it. So I hope that makes sense to you. Um, and so if you haven't tried that app yet, I highly encourage that you look into it, maybe even download it and just see what it has. We're on our fifth family resource and then I have a bonus one for you after. And this is going to family retreats or camps. Now, I understand that this may not be affordable for you to do on a regular basis, but spending even a couple days at a Christian camp with your family can truly be impactful. And depending which camp you go to, They'll probably have different speakers. They'll have kids activities. They'll have, you know, kids meetings. And it's a great way for all of you to kind of take a break from the world, be in a setting with different Christian families, and then you're all learning that, you know, a couple days or that week at a time. And I know for us that for a long time, even now, I'm not sure we would pay for an entire week of family camp, but in our area, there is a family camp that's three days, or I think maybe four days at the most. And so we've done that a few times, and each time was a blessing because we would go with our friends, and it just gives you this focused time you can spend in the Lord, like with the Lord as a family. Um, and we live in Alberta, and there's actually a few Christian camps that are free. And so this family camp that we went to um, was really affordable for us. And so if that's something that sounds interesting for you, that you really kind of want a retreat, you don't have to make any of the meals, you don't have to plan the activities, 
you know, you do have to pack, which I know with kids can be a whole thing, um, but it really is worth it. And so I don't know where you're living. I'm not sure you have access to something free, um, but I would say that it's worth looking into. And if you can't afford a week, sometimes people will just have like a weekend um, or, you know, shorter length camps that are worth exploring just to give yourself that space to grow, but you're doing it with your spouse, with your children, and I highly encourage you to do that if it's something that can fit your schedule and your budget, because I know that not every single area has affordable things, and I totally get that. You've lasted with me for a while, and I'm actually, it's taking longer than I thought. Um, but I just want to thank you. And so I just want to share a bonus resource that for you that you can use. And this is absolutely free. In a couple weeks, I will be sharing the Christ Centered Home Bundle. And even though I created this, I want to read the description so you know exactly what this is. It's a bundle that's designed to help Christian women establish a strong foundation for their family's spiritual life and cultivate a home environment that honors God. So this is a collection of resources from many different Christian businesses and bloggers that have come together to give you, I think we're almost at 30 different resources that you can use to grow in your faith. So we have some devotional books, we have some Christian digital art, we have some Christian courses that you can take. There's even a few family activities for you to use. And so this collection is going to help you just bring Christ into more areas of your life. And like I said, that collection is free. Um, that collection is going to be available for you to get between July 10th to the 31st. But if you're interested in this and you want to learn more, I do have a wait list that you can sign up for. So if this is interesting for you, I'll put the link in the comments, but you can go to www.onedeterminedlife.com forward slash bundle and it'll take you to my waitlist page and you can sign up for that. That means you'll be the first to find out when this bundle gets access to. Plus, I'm not just doing one bundle, I'm actually doing two bundles. The first is free and after you sign up for the free bundle, there will be an opportunity for you to buy a premium bundle that is a collection of premium products from some of our contributors and it's going to be for a small fee but if you join the waitlist you will receive a special coupon discount code that you can use to get that premium bundle for even less. So again if that sounds something like you want to know more about I'll be sharing about it in this Facebook group in some of our other um, podcast episodes but you can go to www.wandeterminedlife.com forward slash bundle to sign up for the wait list, um, or you can ask some questions in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to answer whatever questions you have. So I know that was a lot <laughs> and my goal isn't for you to go and get all 12 things that are in the blog post because remember I just shared with you five um, but I have more in the blog post and that link will also be in the comments. And I don't want you to go and get 12 different things. What I want you to do is to spend some time, go through the different categories and pick the one thing that you wanna do and then go through that list of the three resources and pick one of those to get started because I don't want you feeling overwhelmed. So I don't want you to get all the things. I want you to focus on one thing, one resource, implement it, and then you can always come back to then do the next section and so on and so forth. So in the comments, let me know which area you want the most growth in, and you can check my blog post for resources, or you can ask me whatever questions you have I might be able to give you different suggestions because my goal is to help you have a deep relationship with the Lord 
and give you access to resources that are going to help you do that even easier. So thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. And make sure to come back next week for another episode of the Christian Minute Podcast. Bye.